it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're going to focus in on a quality of uh, both the narcissist abuser as well as the psychopathic abuser, and that is that of depersonalization and gaslighting. Uh, these are tactics that are designed to be a means of emotional manipulation of those people whom they are in quote unquote relationships with. And I put relationship in uh, quotations marks because it's not a real relationship. A relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath and their uh, abused or uh, their abused are very much uh, of a uh, superior and then you know those who are supply and the individual who is the narcissist or psychopath has an insatiable uh, craving to be in power to be in control to be at the helm to be the one uh, with the attention to be the one with all um, you know the, the anything and everything that's going on everything has to be really about them they have to take credit they want to point themselves out they want to point out how how hard they worked they want to pot, po you know point out how uh, responsible they are they want to point out how special and unique they are uh, they want to point out you know how uh, they've made a sacrifice for you here here and there uh, they want to constantly point themselves out put the attention on them even if it's not appropriate and so, whoa, here we go again. I love it when this happens. <laughs> Yay, this is like the second time this has happened today. Uh, we are all back. Everybody's good. Okay. Uh, what do you call it? Like the Titanic, right? We're all in this ship together. If we go down, we, we pull each other up. Okay. <laughs> so where were we? We're talking about the uh, narcissist or psychopath where all the relationship has to be on them. And yes, I do these raw. These are um, just stream of consciousness with my uh, guidepost and I don't edit and cut this. So this is straight from the heart here. So we're talking really about the manipulation of the narcissist and the psychopath and how they constantly need to be at the center of attention. And um, because of this, uh, they will need oftentimes to criticize, insult, berate others to manipulate them to feeling stuck, to feeling really less than and really um, stifle them in, in their sense of reality. Whereas if they can get people to doubt themselves, it's that shock and awe syndrome where if they can just, you know, skirt past you really quickly and, and make some sort of insultory uh, remark or ignore you, as we see in the covert narcissist or, you know, the psychopathic uh, manipulation through their body language, their body chemistry, their word salad, things that are really meant to kind of throw you off and, you know, have everything topple over um, in your life. That's really um, part of the uh, manipulation tactics and the emotional overwhelm that these folks engage in. Um, and so we're talking about really um, the, uh, what does it mean um, for them to really, um, love bomb and then devalue and discard and use this tactic of um, emotional dysregulation through their rage episodes, uh, through their uh, slandering episodes, their triangulation tactics. Um, what does it mean to really depersonalize somebody and brainwash them and gaslight them? They get you to doubt your sense of reality. They get you to kind of lose track of your values. They get you to Put more importance on them than you yourself. But what happens then is in the love bombing, they seem to be, you know, like they're they're there for the long run. They're there for the lifetime. You know, it's you and I against the world. They'll they'll make these promises. In fact, oftentimes, the narcissist and the psychopath will um, say things. You know, like um, it's you and I together. We promise. You know, they'll they'll ask you. And it's almost very done, very tongue in cheek. So. Um, is there's a lot of falseness to it. Um, there's not a lot of reality grasping here or reality testing. So, you know, you might kind of like go along with them on this because they seem so fabulous. Um, they seem so charming. They seem so charismatic. They seem just so magnificent. The way that the things that they can talk about, the way they talk about things, how they seem to be, you know, so, um, loose with, um, what they say, um, how they might be very promiscuous or charming or, you know, the way that they make you laugh. But it's not just a genuine to have a relationship. It's meant to be deliberate and manipulative. And so someone is going to pay the price and it's generally going to be the supply source who is ultimately going to be a victim. 
a victim. So, uh, you know, uh, a victim through um, sacrificing themselves to this individual, giving too much to them, uh, not taking responsibility and accountability for oneself, engaging in a lot of irresponsible behaviors, oftentimes to satisfy or keep up with a narcissist or psychopath. We see a lot of people who, um, you know, turn around their lifestyle. They get into uh, lifestyle difficulties and crunches where, you know, they begin to do a lot of drinking, drugging, self-destructive uh, behaviors. Um, you know, we see people cutting themselves in order to kind of release this emotional torture that they're feeling. Uh, people who get into eating disorders, sleep disorders, etc., all trying to process and deal with this person who has completely over overwhelmed them. Um, and so, you know, this, this is a hallmark trait of a narcissist. So if you feel depleted in energy after being with these people, you feel kind of like down and out, you know, you kind of feel like an emptiness inside. Oftentimes that's because that's, there's an emptiness within these individuals. There's something that you can eventually, when you're around it enough, you can pick up on it. There's a lack of heart. There's a lack of genuineness and you can't, it's kind of like a fire where you have to keep feeding at the wood. And if you don't keep feeding their ego, you know, you're not, the fire isn't going to, isn't going to keep going. Um, so the fire has to be within you, you know, the fire of, of passion and within your life have to, has to exist within you. It can't just exist, you know, for what you feel for this person, because if your fire is only existing outside of you, you're going to go cold, you know, because if that fire goes out and you have no fire within, you know, it's going to go out. So, you need to realize that you, you know, you need to stop fanning the flames of this narcissist or psychopath because that's how, that's how they get you wrapped. Um, you know, you're just there to help promote their ego and it's not to help satisfy you or get, you know, be very beneficial for you, even, even in a, a peaceful way. I mean, someone who is more peaceful around you, who isn't distracting all the time, who isn't detracting from you would be a better partner for you than a narcissistic abuser who is looking to, you know, cause you to distort your sense of reality, that you're not good enough. Um, they get you to, um, also with their pathological lying, you know, making you uh, question the things that ever even occurred, you know, uh, trying to uh, make you feel like, you know, like you were jealous when you were never jealous. They tend to try to, you know, create emotions within you that aren't even there. And then you're constantly having to defend and justify yourself. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to go along with their game or, you know, they, they just, uh, tend to use a lot of, um, uh, you know, emotional, um, uh, dissociation and cognitive dissonance to really throw you off. So, um, you know, I told you, we'd, you know, telling you that, you know, I told you this, or I didn't tell you that, or, you know, um, trying to, you know, messing up with your memory on things or things that they said or that they promised. And you can bet one thing with terms of their cognitive dissonance is you're going to eventually see it that, um, there's going to be a difference between the way, the things that they say and the things that they do. And remember that actions speak louder than words. So, you know, the narcissist or psychopath might make a lot of false promises to you, but yet when you, you know, when they try to, when they try to back up their word, you know, chances are there's a lot of cheating going on. Um, there's a lot of uh, emotional manipulation going on and, um, you know, you find out certain parts of them that they have kept hidden from you and concealed and deceive, you know, deceitful, uh, towards you. So I think that, you know, along uh, with the splitting behavior, there's a lot of dynamics and I want you to see how it kind of all wraps together. You know, when you talk about someone's behind their back, you're basically violating someone's trust if you're talking about them behind their back. And I know a lot of people engage in that, um, but you don't realize that it, that tends to corrode people um, in, in their hearts. Um, if you are always talking about people, gossiping about people behind their back in negative and insidious ways, it's really, you're really kind of polluting your own viewpoint. So I think it's very important and I'm, I'm very much an idealist. Um, and I really much emphasize the importance of certain principles. It's important not to engage in gossip. So just like with every workplace, you know, you, you don't want to engage in that water cooler effect. Um, gossiping about others, talking negatively about others. Likewise, you don't want to talk negatively about the narcissist or the psychopath, um, because they are going to engage in those type of behaviors. Oftentimes talking about people behind their backs, you know, 
spreading the smear campaigns, making lies about you, cheating on you behind your back, and you're going to have a tendency to try to reduce to that level. But remember, if you fight, you know, the especially the psychopath, you know, they love a good fight. They, especially the female psychopath, they love to bicker and um, fight and cause drama. And it's like the drama queen, but it's more pathological than just a drama queen. Like they literally, you know, like to beat people down. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, you got people who are playing tennis, Wimbledon. I mean, it's kind of like living, you know, it's kind of like living with an emotional Wimbledon with these people where they're just trying to battle you down. And you're just like, you know, why am I, you know, having to react and defend and justify myself? Why am I constantly on trial for breathing? I mean, am I not, you know, breathing the right way? You know, I can't put a spoon in the drawer the right way. I can't uh, spoon some sugar in the right way. Everything, you know, everything and anything is is issue for uh, being, uh, you know, uh, faulted. Um, you know, so you are going to get looked at with a microscope, but it's just like the big microscope is going to be like where they can find the fault. But that is, you know, the role of the narcissist to try to make you feel uncomfortable and feel like you, you know, um, but, you know, don't be uncomfortable. Uh, that is within those people. Allow them to be that the way that they are. Let them live their life. Let them, you know, pursue what makes them happy. If they're into the power rush, um, the ego rush, you know, allow them to be that. Just, you know, don't get in their way. And then, you know, let them be and then allow yourself to be. And make sure that the fluidity of your emotions begins to ease up with time. Meaning you don't hold on to so much in your mind. You don't hold on to so much in your body. Release and let it go. Walk into, you know, step into a little bit of a new life for yourself. A new body where you're disconnected from the tension, the criticism, and the shaming that they had tried to implant in you to try to keep you feeling and acting less than just so that they can succeed. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.